Have you been on a plant-based diet and have persistent cholesterol or maybe it went down in the very beginning and now it's just kind of trended back up? Well, we're going to talk about why cholesterol can stay elevated even while you're embracing a whole food plant-based diet. And there's some interesting uh, spin on what menopause does to our cholesterol. So first of all, you know, many people will turn to a plant-based diet to improve heart health and reduce cholesterol levels. There's absolute evidence that this happens for many, many people. And again, while it's highly effective approach, some individuals still have um, an experience that's per with persistent high cholesterol, even with really extreme dietary change. So we're going to explore why cholesterol levels remain elevated on a plant-based diet and how menopause can further impact cholesterol and how you can manage these issues literally effectively. I'm just going to share with you quickly how this happened to me. Last year, um, well, just about a year ago, over a year ago now, I, again, was in the best shape probably I'd been on in a very long time running. I was lifting weights, whole food plant-based diet. I had always excellent labs, never had my LDL, which is my bad cholesterol, over 100 in my entire life. After I finished that half marathon, within a week, I had the craziest symptoms. So, you know, I'm well past the average age of menopause, but I was still having periods, but they were getting longer in, uh, you know, between each one. But I had just had my labs checked. Again, my LDL was always been under 100 pristine labs. Uh, within a week, I had horrible hot flashes. Joint pain was astronomical. Brain fog, not feeling well. And I was like, what is going on? And so I did labs, of course, and my cholesterol was elevated. My LDL above 100 for the first time in my entire over half a decade of my existence. And so I was flabbergasted. So this is really what flung me more deeply into the menopause, premenopause. Absolutely have helped women previously, but I have been like literally for over a year now, well over a year now, just diving into the research. And I can tell you, I've had so many women come to me with patients saying this, I'm just dying here. I've been suffering in silence and I'm so thankful to hear someone speak about it. So we need to be talking more about it. And our hormones for everyone, no, uh, but many women can embrace those and feel amazing. Again, there's many, many things you can do, but I just wanted to share that story, how I overcame that. There were several things that I had to do, and I feel back to myself again. The 103-year-old body that I felt I had has gone away. <laughs> so anyway, let's jump again. Why cholesterol can stay high on a plant-based diet. Number one is genetic factors. So there's absolute Genetic predispositions such as familial hypercholesterolemia um, can cause persistently high cholesterol regardless of diet. And this condition requires more than dietary adjustments. Um, and they absolutely, most of the time, they necessitate medication for effective management. I've seen a family when I was practicing in person with patients back in Colorado. I believe they had three kids and all of them had a total cholesterol well over 400 in their early teens in uh, pre-teen years. Crazy, crazy numbers. Um, number two, saturated fat in plant-based foods, right? So certain plant foods like coconut oil, palm oil, cocoa butter um, are high in saturated fats and can raise your LDL cholesterol. Again, contributing to elevated levels, even though they're plant-based leaning or focus. Um, three is low soluble fiber. So while many plant-based foods contain fiber, it's the soluble fiber like things like oats, beans, and certain fruits that actively lowers cholesterol by binding to it in the digestive tract, right? So your liver is still spitting out that cholesterol and it recycles. And depending on the person, um, you may be a very good recycler and your cholesterol can stay elevated. So that soluble fiber grabs hold of that cholesterol and literally escorts it out the door. Uh, number four is limited plant sterols, right? So plant sterols and stanols uh, can block the cholesterol absorption, but they may be lacking in some plant-based diet. Again, certain foods can be very helpful. I'm not a huge fan of plant sterile supplements. Again, there's a whole another reason for that. So I would steer clear of any plant sterile supplements. Um, but again, just paying attention to your diet and eating a wide range of foods. We'll get to what to do in just a second. Next, number five is the impact of refined carbohydrates. So high intake of refined carbohydrates, even from plant-based sources, can elevate triglycerides and even cholesterol profiles. So focus on whole grains instead of the bagel 
you know, think about the whole grain. <laughs> so again, that will keep your triglycerides lower and your cholesterol uh, more likely in check. Now let's talk a little bit more about how perimenopause, which encompasses the time that you start noticing your periods changing all the way through the first 12 months after your last period. So that's perimenopause. Postmenopausal is the time after that. And so there's seven different stages um, based on studies on where you sit perimenopause or postmenopause. So again, it will just depend on the final menstrual period is really the main determinant and symptoms um, can tell you a few different things as well. You do not need labs necessarily unless you're in a very special case. Um, labs might be helpful, but it's certainly not required. So got off track here. Let's keep jumping. So again, how does perimenopause and menopause affect cholesterol? First of all, you get hormonal shifts. That's obvious. Estrogen helps maintain healthier cholesterol levels by increasing your HDL and then lowering your LDL. And I absolutely saw that. Uh, my HDL had dropped as my LDL had increased. But when I embraced menopausal hormone therapy, things shifted back to the way they were beforehand. And so you remember as estrogen declines during menopause, that LDL and total cholesterol increase, and that creates a more what we call atherogenic lipid profile, meaning that it's more likely to cause plaque and some other things. Number two, menopause can tr transition can um, worsen cholesterol in the and literally your total cholesterol. Um, those, again, it really depends also, I think, on a variety of different factors. Inflammation, uh, insulin resistance is another piece of this. So hormonal shifts um, during menopause often will contribute to weight gain, especially around the abdomen, which will increase inflammation. Again, increase your insulin resistance. That leads to also increased LDL. There's a whole, it's almost like um, a perfect storm of things that can have occur. So you have a diet that maybe not quite optimal. You have, again, some fluctuations in hormones that actually can improve the lipid pro panel disappearing altogether because your lipid metabolism is now out of whack. And again, so when you look at those different type of things and just the milieu of living in this particular lifestyle that many of us do, burdened by a lot of different you know, job requirements and family requirements, we're not as active as we used to, we're not eating as well as we should, those things all compound and during menopause, it just gets worse. Um, so what can you absolutely do? So here's five strategies to start thinking about. And this could definitely help quite a bit. And like I said, I've seen some patients dramatically improve their cholesterol just as recently as, you know, this week seeing patients, we've seen triglycerides drop almost a hundred points. I saw a uh, total cholesterol drop over 60 points. So again, just some things there to pay attention to. Um, number one is increase that soluble fiber. Boost intake foods like oats, your beans, and fruits um, to help lower your cholesterol levels. Um, consider again, looking at those plant sterols and maybe some fortified foods, eating a wide variety of colors and different types of plants in the whole form. Uh, number three is monitor your saturated fats, right? So limit foods that are high in saturated fats, such as coconut oil, coconut milk, um, and opt for healthier whole plant food sources like nuts, seeds, and avocados. Because um, nuts and seeds have been shown to actually lower cholesterol. So like walnuts, you could do hemp seeds, chia seeds. Um, a variety of those are just so good for you. Plus they're higher in protein, low glycemic foods. Number four is prioritize whole grains, right? So choose whole grains over refined carbs to maintain healthy triglyceride and cholesterol levels. Um, number five is staying active. So regular exercise aids in weight management, improves insulin sensitivity, and helps regulate cholesterol levels. And, you know, it reminds me of another conversation I had with patients this morning is you start with your whole food plant-based diet, and then exercise is like that next domino in the whole uh, effect when you start, you know, when you knock down the dominoes and you see them they just fall upon each other and they do a little pattern. It's so cool. Think of, you know, you have your whole food plant-based diet and then exercise is coming right alongside it. Because what exercise does, like mentioned before, increases your insulin sensitivity, but it also helps you sleep better. When you have better sleep, you become more insulin sensitive. You're less likely to have um, the elevated uh, risk for cholesterol, or excuse me, cardiovascular disease, you will lose more weight. Um, so many things can happen when you get better quality sleep. So sleep in and of itself is a whole nother thing that comes along with menopause, perimenopause, 
I'm sure that's a compounding factor in all of this. Um, but again, there's so many strategies that you can implement that are outside of even prescribed medications. And there's even non-hormonal prescriptions that can be helpful for those who can't uh, necessarily take HRT or what we call MHC, menopausal hormone therapy. So, so many things to learn about perimenopause, menopause. The, the science is fascinating what's happening to a woman's body during this time of her life. You thought you went through enough during, you know, going from pu- going through puberty, whole oh heavens, or then having babies if you, ch- if you did choose to have babies. And now you're going through this. It's a time to stop. Turn inward, pay attention, because menopause will just say, yo, wake up. I need you to look inward, and it's time to take care of ourselves. And such a blessing in a sense, um, because there's so much wisdom to be brought from women in this time frame, um, in this part of their, in this age. It's just incredible. So we should embrace it um, as a time to say, hey, we do need to take care of ourselves, and we have a lot to share with others. And so, anyway, I hope you found that helpful. Don't forget, by the way, I totally get where you're at. So as always, thank you so much for being here. I'm just sending gratitude, joy, love, and healing to you because goodness, we all need more of that in our lives and in this world. So thank you everyone and have a great rest of your week.